Now, what I'm about to read, the English, my English kind of off. That's I don't, fine. It I don't write him. like this no more yeah. anymore. So I just wanted to read like a few excerpts of what the mind of a 22, 23 year old kid was going through. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading it because, like I said earlier, a young kid might be watching this. Yeah. And he probably could relate. Maybe this is that kid right now that's watching this. All righty, y'all. We're back for part two. Oh, part my gosh. Part two, part three. I think this is going to be part Ooh, three. I think this is going to be, you want to make this a part three? Yeah, I'm going to have to break this episode up. <laughs> All right, y'all. We we probably in part three or part four because yeah. this is an amazing story. And I'm really appreciative of you taking the time out, Brother Nick, to really allow the audience to get to know you. Because, again, if, if they're listening to us, they have to know who they're listening to, right? Amen. What Amen. drives you? What causes you to go so hard for the Lord? And your call by God journey, it started very young. Right. Many times we don't realize, like, God yes. has had his hand in our lives since the day of our birth. We may not have had a relationship with him at the time. Um, I've heard a preacher say, you are his creation. You're not his child yet, right? Yeah. So at the time you're walking as the creation of God, but not the child of God. Right. So I am so appreciative of you taking us through that journey. So now we're about to enter into this part of your life where you're cheated on. Mm -hmm. What do we do when the woman... <laughs> you quote unquote love and in actuality lust after cheats on you Man. what happens the one thing that i could say about that adney is that um a woman should never break a man's trust because when a man is faithful and when a man is committed once that is gone it is gone because men are tough if you get a man heart like that you got him uh, once a woman do that to a man cheat it's hard to gain that back and I think for me uh, I was 20 years old I believe I was 20 years old at that point and this was like fresh out of high school because I graduated at 20 so praise God I ended up graduating praise Amen. God <laughs> Amen. but um, so life after high school still try to figure things out got cheated on um, it was rough for me the, that, that first few weeks months leading to a year was rough for your brother in Christ because at the time I didn't believe that I could find another love like that mm. lust like that you know mm. so young me said love but the older me is like nah that's not of God that's mm -hmm. lust dude mm -hmm. I don't don't I'm helping them young brothers out there when they say oh I love I love it that ain't love that's mm -hmm. lust. Mm -hmm. You know, love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Mm -hmm. Love does not boast. Love does not fornicate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Love get yeah. married. Yeah. <laughs> you go holy matrimony. Yeah. That's love. Yeah. But for me, Adney, so what ended up happening was I had to find an alternative to the pain that I was feeling. So it was a buddy of mine that I used to work with. He was older than me. Mm -hmm. I always had a habit of chilling with dudes I was older than me. So the dude was like, man, Nick, you just turned 21. He said, man, um, let's start going to the nightclub. Mm. And then I said, I was never a big fan of nightclub. That's number one. I was never a big fan of clubs. Because mm -hmm. I remember earlier when I was 17, my brother, he took me to a, a strip club. And I'm like, why women are doing after this for money? It never mm. made sense to me. Like, mm. why is she nude and she's doing that? It just, to me, it, it just didn't make mm. sense. <laughs> I'm just saying. So you, yeah, maybe gotcha. I'm helping out, right? Yeah. So no, he was like, no, Nick, it's it's a place you go there, you dance, it's dark and women, and I'm like, oh, okay, because I didn't know, because you know you, you don't know, know those type of he, things. He yeah, he's gonna take you to another strip. Yeah. Club. So we went to um, a dance club back in uh, South Beach, mm. and then I'm 21. He said, man, you gonna have a good time on your birthday. You legal, you could legally drink now. That's what he said. You can legally drink. That's why I cringe when people say, man, it's okay to drink Jesus Christ, turn water into wine. Really? 
Really? I, but anyway, this is not about that. Mm -hmm. But so when my friends took me to the club at the age of 21, they started to um, buy me drinks. You mm -hmm. know, it's your birthday. You just turned 21. What do older f friends do? Get you drinks. Get, get you, you drink. Drunk. Yeah. They say, it's going to be your night. We're going to take care of you. So here I am. I'm drinking. And then I'm meeting people like I'm meeting. He said, because I seen them doing it. I seen these dudes like they're at the bar. They're talking to women it's like things you see in the movies. Mm -hmm. Right. They're, they're at the bar. They're talking to women. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, that's what men do. That's what men that do go out. That's what they do. They buy drinks and dance with women and they talk to them and exchange numbers. So I'm starting to observe this stuff. I'm like. I never experienced that before. So I said, you know what? I could do that too. Mm -hmm. So I was like playing around doing it, but these women was giving me their number. I like, wait a minute. Is that easy? <laughs> like yeah. now I am not encouraging y'all to go to the club. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just sharing my story. The club is the, the devil's domain. It sure is. <laughs> Nothing good. There's nothing good in that. Nothing That's the good. devil's domain. So yep. you talk. I'm just setting the picture up for y'all, y'all. That's what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. So I was going to the nightclub and just women was attractive to me. I'm 21 years old. I don't have a girlfriend, so I needed that. Mm -hmm. Cause remember the breakup. Your so ego what, was bruised. Yeah. yeah. So all these various women are give me their numbers, and I'm like, wow, like I didn't know that I could get five numbers in one night. And they would call me the next day and mm -hmm. we would talk. Mm -hmm. So the more and more I kept doing that, I kept on forgetting about the previous relationship. The way to get over the ne the first one yeah. is to get a new one. Yeah, to get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what happened. So, um, so the more I 21 and I started being more confident, so wanting to go to the barbershop, get haircuts, get mm -hmm. outfits. Because I figured out, you know, maybe I could get, instead of getting five women one night, I could get 10. Mm -hmm. I could start dating 10 women. So I would, like, date these women. I would go out go out with them, go to the movies, go to dinner. And I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no attachment. They feeling you. You feeling them. And I thought that was the thing. But deep down in my heart, I still felt empty. I felt like something was missing. Mm-hmm through it all you know all those years from 21 22 going out getting drunk and i mean getting drunk i'm not talking about taking a sip getting drunk and meeting women and saying how easy it is to talk to women how easy it is to exchange numbers how easy it is to go on dates i was doing all those things but i was never satisfied i'm like wait a minute years ago prior to the way i'm feeling right now I had a girlfriend that I was faithful to, but fast forward, I'm doing all these things. I'm going to the club, meeting new women, different type of women, and I'm still feeling empty. And I'm, I'm saying that for a reason. There was no God. There was no God. So I always say this, that I was the agent of the devil. Mm. I was working for Satan. You can serve one master. You can't serve two. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was like, okay, I know what side I chose. I know the direction that I'm going. Mm -hmm. So I was building Satan's kingdom up. Mercy. I was going out there, drinking, getting drunk, acting a fool, cursing. It's like the more and more I indulge in those sinful activities, the worse I became. Mm -hmm. And let me share this with you. Um... And I think this is a good stopping point, you know, to to share about the notebook, mm -hmm. because, you know, even without even going to detail everything that transpired from the things that I did in the world, like from drinking and going on a downhill spiral, because it came to the point like I would curse every every sentence that come out my mouth was French. And, I and mean, you know, it's so funny because Sister, Dan uh, Sister Jackie said today when we went to go, you know, do the the, the food drive. She saw two two women. She thought one of them was uh, the mom, a, a girl talking to her friend, mm -hmm. but she was talking to the mom. And she said every other word that came out of 
each of their like the daughter was talking every other word was a cuss word then the mom opened her mouth and every other word was a cuss word wow and i'm like the the, the dictionary is so vast in words that we cannot even articulate yes. these words yes but the profanity is just so loosely yes it's easy to come out of our mouths and what i'm realizing is when you are absent of god <sighs> When you are devoid of wow. God, the language that comes out of your mouth will never be clean until wow. you allow God to really have his way with you. And that to me is, is very powerful. So you said you're about to share a journal entry with yes, us. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. My and brother. the reason why I wanted to share this mm-hmm. because so one thing also worth mentioning too because at this time i'm still living with my aunt but my at at this point my aunt prior to you know prior to that she um bought in her husband her husband is a warlock Mm. so he was in his country and then she brought him back to the states so so while he was in haiti he was he was he must have been very big oh yeah yeah so when he came down here so i'm doing all these things and then he been in our house for like years, being a mm. warlock. So and so these are the other things that I haven't I didn't even touch on. I'm just talking about the exterior stuff that would have transpired in a nightclub. Mm-hmm. But there were things that was happening within. In the in the spiritual world. Yeah. yeah. So I want people to understand that it was a broken home. Mm-hmm. That this like this dude here was sacrificing animals, sacrificing chickens and mm. this and all doing, doing his warlocks. Yeah. Voodoo practices. Yeah. In the home. Yeah. Or, or what we would call what most people would call in, in if, if you're a witch, your seances in the in the in the voodoo world. They're called. Um, oh, my gosh. It escapes me. But it's it's almost the same thing where you're doing the different sacrifices to feed the demons that you right worship, right right that you are praising that you call upon to you know embody you and all that other stuff um, yep so, so that's yeah. that's what happened so all this stuff is going on with me at, at this point i'm like 22 going on 23 and i'm just like i'm trying to figure life out mm-hmm. and and i just thought it would be fitting to read what i was going through mentally psychologically you know maybe perhaps just to help our audience appreciate god's call or god's hand on somebody's life that's mm-hmm. why i always say like god is sovereign you don't know what folk god is doing in people's life yeah and then because who knows i might have a 23 year old watching this yeah that might be going through the self same thing that i went through yeah over 20 years ago yeah right yeah. So I was reading this and it almost brought me to tears. And I, I want to share this with you and our audience. And this is my, um, this is the notebook. Cause I, I ended up going to college cause the people, cause I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Life at the high school. My, my son kept saying my son, auntie. I mean, auntie, my aunt auntie. Yeah. Auntie. My aunt told me like, Nick, you got to do so much yourself. You can't work at Wendy's. You can't, you can't do this. You can't, she said, find something to do. And I kept telling her that school ain't for me. Mm. You know, you again, you don't have people to, to give you a roadmap mm-hmm. to point you a direction mm-hmm. where you need to go. Mm-hmm. So in the hood, they tell you other things otherwise. Like they tell you it's the street. Yeah, it's the streets, man. It's that street life. You gotta get how you get, it, man. Mm-hmm. Get it how you living. <laughs> get how you. Yep. Get it how you living. Yep. Yeah. So so that's how it was. You know. So I I didn't go to school until one day I just said, you know what, forget this. Um, I'm going to end up going to school. And the reason why I end up going to school, because um, they end up fire me from Wendy's. Mm. And then so when they fire me from Wendy's, um, I end up having I used to do uh, online. I do like a podcast and not knowing that it was a podcast. Gotcha. I actually had a um, a broadcast show when I was like 22 years old. Wow. So, yeah, so I was online. I used to come on like every night and I used to talk to people throughout the whole country. Okay. Yeah. And I was to talk about worldly topics, mm-hmm. relationships. Mm-hmm. So, and then people like, man, I, I can't wait till you come back on. They'd be like, man, what the next topic going to be about? So it's crazy that I'm doing this. You see, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody when God is directing your steps. So when I got fired from Wendy's, they let me go. I was like, man, I was like, man, I'm going to just do this online. Mm-hmm. Just talk about different things gotcha and that's what i did i did that for months okay and then it was this time that my my brother he was getting treatment at this doctor's office and then they needed somebody that could 
be at the desk that could talk to their patients. Mm. And then my brother was like, I think I know somebody that like to talk. Like, you know, somebody, <laughs> somebody that can somebody that's fit for the job. Mm-hmm. It is so they told me about it. I said, you know, at the time I have a job, I said, Yeah, I think I could do that. Mm-hmm. And then so he like, man, just cut your hair, look nice, go in there with a suit. And that's what I did. I went there, nice suit, spoke to the doctor. He said, you the man for the job. Wow. And then they hired me in the doctor's office. So here I am. I'm like this hood dude, you know, hood environment, working for a doctor's office. And that right there taught me to be professional. Mm. Yeah. Again, God's yeah. hand. Yeah. So yep. I went from doing like the show to working at the doctor's office, now to being more professional. So the more and more I was hanging around those type of people, they like my patients kept telling me, Nick, go to school go to school my auntie telling me go to school that and that's God. why at that point i said you know what let me just go to school for something and that's how i end up signing up for uh, college and then while i was in college my professor was like whatever you whatever you got going in your heart write it down if you got something going on write it down. and i'm like she said that's how you're gonna become a better writer mm. yes and and I, what i'm about to read the english my english kind of off that's i don't, fine. I don't write him. like this no more yeah. <laughs> anymore so I just wanted to read like a few excerpts of what the mind of a 22, 23 year old kid was going through. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading it because, like I said earlier, a young kid might be watching this. Yeah. He probably could relate. Maybe this is that kid right now that's watching this. Gotcha. And I'm helping I'm helping him or her. Yeah. So this is the 23 year old me. So I'm just going to just read a few. It said I'm 23. I'm planning on making a little change in my life. Mm -hmm. I might stop being a player. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling myself, I got to stop being a player. I got to stop going out there chasing them women. Mm -hmm. So I already got that in my mind. Like I already established that I got to get rid of all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, I got to work hard, get more money. You see, cause we poor, we we, were poor, you know, (laughs) we was on government assistance. Assistance, So we're like, man, I I need more money out here. And I said, I want to live on my own have a family, and maybe start school. So this is before starting school. And I said, I'm still in a process on making a big move that might shock my whole family. Mm. At the time, I didn't know what it was. I'm just writing. So I always had a habit of writing, but I guess when my professor told me that, it just kind of like let me just keep, just going. keep yeah. going. And I wrote this in February 16, 2004. Okay. 2004 so at this point i'm 23 all the previous pages i'm 22 Mm -hmm. so this right here is because if i turn the other page i'm 22 because my you know my birthday yeah is on the love day yeah the the so-called love day so um so here it is here's another excerpt on february 27 um 04 i said but i've been doing a lot of thinking Mm -hmm. about not going out tonight Mm. you see because as you can hear I'm clubbing a lot. I'm drinking a lot. I'm doing a lot of sinful activities. And I said, and also about life. Mm. So you're going to hear about life a lot. Gotcha. Because some people, they just don't know. Yeah. That young man just don't know. That young lady just don't know. Yeah. Like, what is life? Why am I here? Yeah. Why is this happening to me? Yeah. Why am I in this position? Yeah. They just don't know why. It's all about life, right? You're just trying to figure things out why you're here. Yeah. And that's kind of like where I was at. I said, like, I, this is what I said. I said, like I say, only God mm-hmm. know what's going to happen. I just need a sign that I could understand. Mm. So I'm writing this and I put God in it. Mm-hmm. I said, God, I just need something, a sign that send only me. Lord, send me a sign. Only, <laughs> yeah, only I can understand this. So yeah. I'm, so that's why I, I'm glad that I wrote this as evidence that I'm not saved at this point. Yeah. This is before your conversion. This is before my conversion to Christ. I'm reading stuff that I wrote in 2004. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make that very clear. So here's another excerpt. It says, um, so I spoke to an old buddy of mine, and he asked me, what am I going to do tonight? And I told him I might go to the movies. And he told me to watch The Passion of Christ. Mm. That was around the time The Passion of Christ came out. Mercy, yeah. So, and this is what I said. I says, and the good thing is I'm going to watch it. It may not be today, but I'm going to watch it. I believe that's a sign God put towards Hollywood. And I feel that God loves us so much 
that he wants everybody to see what's soon to come. Mm. Just the other day, I heard somebody, and I'm talking about how somebody lost their life. So I'm writing this, and I'm not safe. I'm saying, well, God, maybe you touched the heart of Hollywood to put out the passion of Christ because you love us so much Mm -hmm. that you want us to get it. You want us to be saved. Yeah. I'm saying this, and I'm lost. Mm. I'm saying this. I'm not... That's why I'm, I got to reiterate this. Don't be judging people. Yeah, there, there, there's walk. righteous you judgment. Know. Yeah. You know, we want to judge them righteously. But again, you don't know where you they're don't know, at. You don't know their walk. You don't know why they're going through what, they, what exactly. they're going through. You don't know why God allows them to endure what they endure. And the beauty of it is, is and I can only say for me. Right, right, right. Is that. I, I, I did a thing and I've been beating myself up and it's like in today you and your wife said you're going to be a minister's wife. Mm. So it's like I hear God speaking through you all to me because now it's like, OK, Adney, where do you stop mm. and let God begin? Yeah, because it's not about you, because the calling on your life is greater than you. Yes. Right. And I think that's one of the things that non-Christians don't realize when you, when you, when you're in this world, God specifically chose you, what you've gone through, what you've endured. It's, it's purposeful. Yes. And because it's purposeful, it's now like you've got to draw into God so God can show you the purpose yes. of why you had to go through that right, so as right. you're reading your journal entry i'm like oh my gosh like god is really preparing yes. you yes like in all honesty brother nick god was discipling you without mm. you even realizing wow. that he was discipling you it didn't take man to disciple you he was doing the work for you because wow. of your reflective nature right, right right many of us don't reflect on things that we do we just do right right you had a reflective nature and mm. that's the thing that people don't understand mm. when you reflect on your life when you start saying maybe god had mel gibson create this film yes to draw us to them right is there a like is there a god out there for real like this like this is the reflective nature right and god is saying to you i put that in you for a reason that is one of the reasons like and i tell your wife this all the time i admire the fact that when you got into a relationship with christ mm-hmm. you wasn't teeter tattering you right. said i'm in right right i ain't I don't need to veer to the left and I don't need to veer to the right because I know what God showed me. Not all of us get that. Right. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. It's just a matter of your walk and your journey. So that I'm really appreciative of. Go ahead and read. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to just read a a few more because I I think they're all powerful. Mm -hmm. I might probably write a book one day. You could use all of that for (laughs) you to write a book. (laughs) Write a book. Yeah. Um, So in this one, I said, um, you know what let me read let me read um these few let me read let me read this right here i'm gonna read just two more Uh, and so this is in march uh third 2004 i said now that i'm 23 i see things a lot different i sometimes think think where do we go life after death Mm, see he's already discipling you You see that yeah god is already discipling you yeah yeah like God is discipling you. Mm. Like people don't understand the power of God. We limit him to just the Bible, but we don't realize yes, that he yes. is God. Yes. Yes. Like how dare we think that his infinite power stops with the great book. We and brother Daniel's, Thank God he's always said this to me. And I think he's said it before in other spaces. We are spirits on a human journey. Yes, absolutely. Not humans on a spiritual journey. If we continue to operate as just humans, we're going to miss the spiritual walk that we're supposed to take with Christ. It will always be surface. Yes, yes. Right? Because we're spirits. Spirit, you don't just stay in a shell. 
you evolve. Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right. And we keep God to just, yep. and, and don't get me wrong. I love the word of God. I love the word of God, man. There's some, some accounts you read. You're like, Oh my gosh, Lord, you put this in here. You allowed this to be written. Why? Because our lives are mimicking it now. Yes. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Like our lives are mimicking it now. So if our lives are mimicking the words, how can we just stop there? Mm, right. It's deeper than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's deeper than that. I, I, I believe before I read this uh, last one, I believe that God would because God is sovereign. He's merciful. He, he's full of grace. Let me tell you something. God love us so much. He'll go to the extreme to get the ones he love. He he love us that much. Mm -hmm. Cause like, as I'm reading this, you know, I cause I'm sitting here like, God, like why me? Because I love you. Mm -hmm. You know, when you got saved, God, why me? Because I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, um, and this is the part, this is the one that, that really got me at me. And I'm gonna continue my story. This is the, the one that really got me. Um, so I wrote this on April 25th. 2004 <laughs> 23 year old me mm. I'm 40 plus year old now i'm getting up there and he's soon <laughs> you know what if you don't read the story oh i'm sorry let me read the story so um so 23 i wrote this i said i dream so i said this morning i had a vision mm -hmm. this is my language now this morning i had a vision i dreamed that the lord christ cleansed cleared all my sins for a quick second it's like i felt to believe that everything was actually happening mm. it was more like a dream on top of a dream mm. the dream tells me a lot it tells me that the end is near i think that's why i see the number 9 11 everywhere mm. I got a chance to give Jesus a hug in my dream when I told my aunt that Jesus, she was a bit shocked. The one thing that Jesus, Jesus Christ was disappointed at me was that the fact that I sinned again. Mm. He didn't like that. I think one of these days I'm going to have to talk about the religious belief to my family. I believe that I'm the chosen one who was chosen from the man above. Mm. And sure enough, what are you doing? I know. Sure enough, what are you I doing? I wrote this at 23 at years 23. old. At 23. Not knowing. That's exactly what you're doing now. Yeah. It's not, But it's not just to your siblings. It's to coworkers. It's yes. to people you see at the store. Yes. It's, it's like, yes. again... This Jesus, was a dream. In your dream, in my dream God yeah. showed you that you're a vessel used to evangelize, to make disciples. Yes. Right? Um, and that's the beauty of God. Yes. He's purposeful. There are times we miss it, but you paid attention to it. Yeah. Because I was, because, you know, see, I was two different people. You know, like I said, when, you, when you're an agent of Satan, you work for him. <laughs> Period. You work for me. Ain't no, ain't no God. Yeah, God is sovereign in a mm -hmm. sense. Cause what God does, God give us warnings. Yeah. You know, his grace will send us there. There's there's warning come before the fall, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he'll send you the sign. Hey, you know you're going the wrong direction. Yeah. But most people tend to go, 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 and keep going and keep going. And like, God, look, I don't want to have to do with you, God. Yeah. I guess it's it's that saying that, you know, man look on the out to ex exterior, but God look on the inside yeah. of the heart of man. So God already knew my heart that I guess in a sense that if he could just get me some kind of way. He he came through me through a dream. And mm -hmm. I'm we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. As you can see, I'm 23 years old. I forgot all about this, by the way. Yeah. yeah. It's just that when I was reading, I'm like, I wrote this at 23. So this is what ended up starting to happen. So I started, so me and my homeboys, all this stuff is happening to me, and I'm slowing down a little bit. Mm. So I'm still clubbing, I'm still a drunken, alcoholic, still going haywire, because like I said, I was two different people. At night, I become a person, a different person. 
By day, I'm a professional. Mm. At night, I'm this player, like, where they at, where they at? By day, a professional. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's two different personalities. Those are spirits. I'm mm -hmm. just calling for what it is. Yes, those yeah. are spirits. Yeah. And because every time I, that I indulge in those type of beverages, I open doors. I gave the enemy access to come therein. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tell people that when you indulge in those type of activities, you're opening doors to spiritual warfare. Yeah. Because I lived it. Yeah. It's one thing when somebody said, no, nah, no, nah, I can have a drink or two. I can, you know, as long as I don't get tipsy. No. You smoking weed, you need anything that, that going to clear your, your, your mess with your conscience. You giving the enemy access. I tell Adney, people got to realize that the enemy been here before us. They are spiritual beings. Absolutely. They study us. They yep. watch us. Yep. All they need is vulnerability. Oh, yeah, they vulnerable. Boom. Yep. Psh, go. There it is. Yep. Go. Yep. Yeah. And that's what happened with me. So so um, after that, I ended up getting a girlfriend. Mm. Second real girlfriend. Because at the time, my first breakup, you know, when I lost my virginity, I didn't trust any other woman. So I ended up getting a girlfriend. And I said, man, I kind of like her. Mm. Kind of cool. And I was spending time with her. And then my friends are like, man, you all lovey W. Stop spending time with her. That's how dudes talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, back when I was young. Yeah. They're like, man, you can't have one girl. Like, you all loved up, love bird. No, you got to have many. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. So, um, do you care to share who that girlfriend was? No, this was actually before um, my wife. Gotcha. Actually, yeah. So, um, I met this girl and I said, you know what? I, I can't do this. I can't have a girlfriend. Mm. I can't. And I thought that she was the one. Mm. I thought that she was the one, but my lifestyle was in alignment. I'm still, still trying to figure things out. Trying to find yourself. Yeah. And then, so at the age of 23, I probably might have met her around 24, maybe 25. And then fast forward 27, that's when I met my third girlfriend. Mm. I met my third girlfriend. And then me and her talking for a little bit. My I was dating other women also. Mm -hmm. So she, you know, the way that dudes thinks on the street, Adney, they always have one main chick. You have the main S one. Sisters, you, I'm putting up y'all on yep, game. You have the main one. The dudes and you got have a side. main one, then they got the side one. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. So mm -hmm. um, especially our neighbor, I don't know how it is in other, you know, Just ethnic groups, but you know, Caucasian, you know, uh, in african-american community you got a main chip yeah that's my main chip baby mama but yeah i got a little something on the side as well just in case you mm -hmm. know what i mean that's the just in yeah, case that's chick. Just if it don't case. work out with yeah, the main the then case. you know yeah. i fall back on the on but the i don't side. know how it is now i heard like women are more are starting to be like that now that's yes, what i heard yes and yes yeah that's crazy right but anyways i don't yeah. want to talk about that so what happened I, so at the age of 27 i met a girl another girl Cause I, I left me and the other girl, we broke up. We, the second girl, mm -hmm. we broke up. And then I met several years, like two years later, two or three years later, I met another girl at the age of 27. Mm. And that's important too. Mm -hmm. I met her at 27. So all these years, God is getting my attention. So since I used to club so much, drink a lot, cuss a lot, do all kind of crazy stuff. And all throughout those years, I almost died, by the way. I mm. just didn't share some of those moments where I almost died. Mm -hmm. 